Hey YouTube, what you're about to see is entirely Craig's fault. Hey everyone, so I am currently out um, outside the house, currently waiting for the delivery of my new steed, which I'm incredibly excited about. I haven't been this excited about buying a car for a long time, so very, very excited. Can't wait to show you what an absolute shit box I've just bought. Stay tuned. So here I am in my new steed that's just been delivered. So this car has just made the however many hundred mile journey from Bradford to South Wales. Um, it's a 1993 Renault 19 1.9 RT TD. The RT is important. That means it is one with all the optional extras on it. You know, it hasn't got any of the missing button caps, front electric windows, sunshine roof, power steering, radio controls here. Um, yeah. That's about as luxury as it got in 1993, I guess. So yeah, having a good look around it now, so come with me as I uh, show you around it. I'm running out of lights, so I might have to, through the magic of editing wizardry, um, cut to some footage that I might take tomorrow, hopefully if the weather's nice, uh, and we've got some better lights. But to say I'm over the moon is incredible. It is, I'm over the moon with this. Brilliant. So let's start off with everything that's wrong with my Renault 19 so far. Considering I've only had it less than 24 hours, let's start from the front. So, I mean, apart from just 28, 27 year old bodywork, there's not an awful lot wrong really. We've got a slight crack in the light here, we've got a crack number plate, and we've got a very religious fog light that is a little bit holy. Apart from that, on that front bumper is fine. The bonnet's all straight, the bonnet's all in one shape. The wing has got a little bit of a dent there and some crustiness here, which I'm sure can be sorted out. Come up to the windscreen, bit of a sorry state of affairs. I think it's starting to delaminate on the corners. It's got some chips, it's got some cracks. It's got a little bit of rust coming through there. So what I'm worried about is when we do want to replace the windscreen, that the frame is going to be rusty, which is going to cause us some issues. It's got a nice 2005. So this is, I think, is a Swiss vignette, um, similar to the ones we had when we went to Switzerland in 2019. So passenger side wing, little bit crusty there. Nothing that we can be alarmed about. All nice and straight down the doors. Now these seem to be pretty common on the Rail 19. There's the window seals. They've obviously got some water ingress underneath them and the metal framing that sits inside them has obviously rusted and has blown up the, uh, the seals. Apparently, for love nor money can you get those anymore. So I have to try and source something, but I'm wondering whether or not something can be made up with just some generic seals, so we'll have to take them off and have a look. But, I mean, every single door, they're just absolutely knackered, which is unfortunate, but, you yeah, know, it's all part of the game. Wheels are all in good shape. This little arch here, a little bit of rust there, but nothing too major. Coming around to the back, really good shape around the back, actually. Lights are in good neck, nice little GB sticker. Spoiler for extra downforces. Nothing to write home about, really. All good. Windscreen's in good shape. Weirdly, this seal seems all right. No real major rust. Now, the piece de, de resistance. 
is this arch which will definitely need some work so I think I'm gonna look at buying a complete repair panel there and seeing if one of the boys can do it bit of rust at the bottom of the doors again nothing to write home about bit of rust here absolutely fine and this wing again is crusty on the driver's side not too bad at all up to the sunshine roof it works it's electric loving life just this seal that needs to be replaced and again I'll just get some generic seal to just replace that when I can moving on to the inside the central locking works which is good the electric windows work which is good the seats have gone a little bit saggy over the years but let me tell you they are incredibly comfortable so well happy with that I mean this is in really good nick um, speakers are there good <laughs> Back to that magnificent view. As far as I can tell, everything apart from the original stereo, which I've replaced, works. The fans work, these switches work, the clock works, the replacement stereo now works with this cool little magnetic cover. The horn definitely works because I managed to press it at 10 past 8 this morning by accident, which my neighbours will love. Just after the quick drive that I had, the speeder works, but is a little bit twitchy. So, I mean, you know that you're doing somewhere between 20 and 30 or 30 and 40. What you're doing within that is anyone's guess. Wipers work. Obviously, gutted that I can't have this working with my aftermarket stereo. So maybe I'll look to see if I can source um, a replacement original. Uh, the only thing I haven't tried, actually, is electric windows. So come with me on this journey. Mm. Okay, that's a resounding no for the right mirror and a resounding no for the left mirror. But I think it's just this switch. It's just a little bit ropey, you know? So maybe I'll see if I can source a replacement switch. Windows work. Lovely job. So does the passenger side. sluggish going up. Sunshine roof works. Goes back all the way. Oh you're gonna have it on the old tilt as well. Remote central locking. Dome lights work. Yeah. So as far as I can see on the inside everything is a winner. For a 28 year old car. Absolutely brilliant. Handbrake works. Gears work. So let's go on the journey of starting this car. Um, it doesn't like cold starts. In fact, if I bring you down here, there's a nice little toggle switch there. And what I've discovered is that that toggle switch is for a manual glow plug relay that's under the bonnet. So I think cold starts is definitely a crank and flick that switch to get some extra heat in the cylinders to get it going. But if I just very delicately start it, because the barrel is a little bit worn, so it doesn't quite return back to the ignition position when you uh, first try and start it, but this should start because I've just driven it over to this industrial estate. And she's very lumpy until you give her some revs and she settles down absolutely fine. And she sits there all day long. Tiny bit of smoke came out the back, but I think that's just because of the, the little misfire on when it starts up. Well done, plucky Renault. And for the eagle-eyed amongst us, you might have noticed the mileage that's on this car is currently 413,858 miles, which is enough to go to the moon and just over halfway back just for a little bit of trivia. Check the wipers work. Yeah, it goes over a little bit too far this side. Not too sure why that is. But I've also noticed that the windscreen wiper also fouls on the bonnet slightly when it's shut. Washers work. Rear wiper works. And we've got our heaters.
all working. Spot on. I mean, it only goes up to three unis any more than three. One, two, three. It's everyone's favourite game of let's play what's inside the boot. Well, plenty to choose from. You've got some spare rear lights. Don't look in bad nick. Always handy to have some spare wipers, some genuine rental mats by the looks, some non genuine rental mats. What else have we got in here? Big Jubilee clip. We've got a side repeater indicator, exhaust hanger, a spare alternator belt, always handy. High vis, another spare alternator belt. Uh, something with something inside it. Some brake pads wrapped in some rag. Some rags, some rags, some rags. <laughs> what have we got in here? We've got some Vac and Valley bulb, bulb. What's this? This is Stylo Retouch Applicator Pen. Oh, what's this little trinket here? A tiny gaming conference 2004. Sogo Sun Gaming. Nice. Uh, what else we got in there? We've got some body clips and a pencil. Nice. Strut top there, we've got our jack handle there. We've got some speakers, which by the sounds of them are very dead. We've got our jack, and then there's this, which I think might be a CB aerial. I'm not entirely sure if I'm honest. So, yeah, no idea. Yeah, that is what's in the boot of this car. Loads of mats, some spare belts, some spare lights, some spare windscreen wipers, a screwdriver, and that's that. So there's no spare wheel well in those cars because the spare wheel is underneath. There's a spare aerial. Doesn't look too good, it's in the better days. Not too bad, it's in pretty good nick. Look at this for a driving position. This is not a standard steering wheel, this looks like it's off a Megane Sport. Ah, uh, sorry, a uh, Rail 19 16 valve or something maybe? Quite rare, so that I've read. I've already put in a JVC Bluetooth unit. I did want to get the original working and I did get a code for it. I paid eight quid for a code for it and then it didn't work. It was just no sound coming from any of the speakers. So I tested it with this Bluetooth unit and the sound worked fine. Which is a shame because as you can see here I've got the optional extra that is the radio controls on the steering column. And I would have loved to have been able to use those. That would have been brilliant. We've got some stuff in the glove box. Some more bulbs, windscreen wipe holder, some tax discs, and some recycling centre permits, uh, some polo mints, some fuses, a rag, um, oh, new cam belt fitted at 361,000 miles, mint. I've got some personal details that I won't show you, and I've got a Cumbria County Council parking disc time thing. And I've got some valve caps, and some salt, and some wiring. Nice. We have got all of the buttons, not a single blank. My clock works, my heaters work, and the stereo works. And we've got this bad boy which has got magnets, well it's got metal in there, and on the side there's magnets. So you simply pop it on.
and that's the stereo gone for that slick French standard feel. So I like these dials when you turn the engine on. When you turn the ignition on, you watch that middle, uh, the middle three dials, you watch that bottom right one. Comes on, lights up, goes to two thirds of the way up, and that is my oil level. Let's just turn that radio down. That is the oil level, and as soon as you start the car, that goes out, because obviously you can't tell what oil level is when you're running the car. Coming down here, I've got a nice little cubby that comes out for reasons that only the French can understand. I have found a mystery key and it's on both the spare key, which is this one, and the main key. And I couldn't find where it went. And then, looking at the gov blocks, nothing immediately obvious, and then you get to this. And it fits. turns but I don't know what it does this is as yet unknown functionality in my mighty 19 so no idea it doesn't undo a flap or anything that I can see interesting so you're probably wondering why do I need another project car? Um, um, I, um, um, and there's many complex answers to that question, which will involve calculus and trying to solve the meaning of life. None of which I've got time for on this YouTube video, so I won't get into it. But. I've got it now, so we'll try and keep it running and I want to try and get into a, at least an mot situation Which will probably take a little bit of work given that it's got speed holes in it And just rack the miles up on it. It's got 400 413,000 miles on it now, so if I can get it to 500,000 then happy days I can't see why I wouldn't why I wouldn't be able to do it. Craig definitely made me do it I don't think I would have this Rail 19 sat clogging up my driveway if he hadn't have bought that red piece of shit that he's already put a video up about. But uh, we'll just have a play around and have some fun with it. I think Craig's got some pretty cool plans for his. I've got some slightly different plans for mine. Um, whether they go to plan or not, time will only tell. So let's just keep um, let's just keep you updated with it. But thank you very much for watching um, me drone on about a nearly 30 year old friendship box. Like, subscribe, all that jazz, you know what to do. Follow us on the socials, links are in the descriptions down below. Um, see you soon.